out of the shadows comes a planeswalker, an assassin, and she's going to bring the shadows with her and have hell to pay. Hello, Oathbreakers, and welcome back to the Signature Spellbomb YouTube channel, your place for budget Oathbreaker deck techs. Today, our deck is Veraska Scheming Gorgon. For four and two black, she's a legendary planeswalker with five loyalty if we plus two her. We get to anthem all of our creatures by plus one plus O till end of turn. If we minus three her, we can destroy target creature, and if we minus ten her, creatures we control gain death touch, and whenever a creature deals combat damage to an opponent, that player loses the game. That's a pretty big phrase. Let's look at how we're going to do that. This is a fairly weak deck, and don't expect people to let you get to that 10 often. It's really a deck more just for fun, which is kind of true of many decks you'll find around $22. Our signature spell is a one-cost sorcery called Price of Betrayal that lets us remove up to five counters from target artifact, creature, planeswalker, or opponent. That will matter when we get a little bit deeper into the deck. For one in a black, we have a 3-1 Asylum Visitor at the beginning of each player's upkeep. If that player has no cards in their hand, we get to draw a card and lose a life. So if our opponents are having trouble or they play out their entire hand and get in the top deck mode, we have a way to get some card advantage off of that. We can madness this into play for one in a black. Blood Scrivener for one in a black is a 2-1 Zombie Wizard. If we would draw a card and we have no cards in our hand, instead we draw two cards and lose one life. Again, this is just our draw advantage engine. Changeling Outcast, one black, is a 1-1 one, one that can't block, can't be blocked, and is every creature type. Core Prowler for four is a 2-2 two, two with Infect, and when it dies, we proliferate. Draw the Cutthroat for one and a black is a 1-1 one, one with Shadow. If we pay one and a black and tap it, we can destroy target creature with Shadow. Dwathi Ghoul for one and a black is a 1-1 one, one Shadow. It says whenever a creature with Shadow dies, we put a 1-1 one, one counter on Dwathi Ghoul. Dwathi Horror for one and a black is a 2-1 Shadow that can't be blocked by white creatures, which is not something we're going to run into pretty often. Dwathi Jackal for two and a black is a 2-1 Shadow, and if we pay two black, we can sacrifice to destroy target blocking creature. Dwathi Marauder for two and a black is a 3-1 Shadow creature. I guess I should explain Shadow. Shadows are creatures uh, that essentially can't be blocked, uh, can block and only be blocked by creatures with Shadow. For two and a black, we have a 2-1 Shadow. If we pay one and a black, we can pump it by plus one plus O oh until end of turn. Dwathi Mind Ripper for three and a black is a 2-1 Shadow that when it attacks and it isn't blocked, we may sacrifice it. If we do, defending player discards three cards. I like people to keep in mind that all of these Shadows might be good adds for ninja decks. Dwathi Slayer for two black is a 2-2 two -two Shadow that attacks each combat if able. Dwathi Warlord for one and a black is a Shadow creature that has power equal to the number of creatures with Shadow on the battlefield. Fleshbag Marauder says when enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature, and it is a 3-1 for 3 mana. Merciless Executioner is pretty much the exact same creature. Plague Crafter costs 2 and a black. It's a 3-2 when enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature or Planeswalker, and every player who can't discards a card. Ravenous Chupacabra for 2 and 2 black is a 2-2 when enters the battlefield, we can destroy target creature and opponent controls. Shadow Alley Denison for one black says whenever another black creature enters the battlefield under our control, target creature gains Intimidate until end of turn. Shriek Maw for four and a black has Fear, and it's a 3-2 uh, creature. When it enters the battlefield, we can destroy target non-artifact, non-black creature, or we can inv evoke it for one and a black. Slum Reaper for three and a black is a 4-2. When it enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature. Tormented Swirl for one black, can't block and can't be blocked, and it's a 1-1. One, one. Vampire of Dire Moon for one black is a 1-1 one, one lifelink death touch creature. Spread the Sickness of four and blacks is destroy target creature, then proliferate. Defile gives target creature minus one, minus one until end of turn for each swamp we control. It's a really good card in a mono black deck. 
Grim Affliction for two in black puts a minus one, minus one counter on target creature, and then we proliferate. Tragic Slip for one black gives target creature minus one, minus one till end of turn, or minus three, minus three until end of turn if a creature died this turn. Undying Evil, target creature gains Undying until end of turn. When it would die, instead it re-enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Contagion Clash for two colorless mana. Enters the battlefield, we put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature, and at any time we can pay for and tap it to proliferate. Glaring Spotlight says creatures opponents control with Hexproof can be target of spells or abilities we control as if they didn't have Hexproof. We pay three and sacrifice Glaring Spotlight creatures we control gain Hexproof and can't be blocked this turn. Throne of Geth has tap, sacrifice an artifact, proliferate. Burnt Longbow says equipped creature has tap. This creature deals one damage to any target equipped for three. As you may have noticed, there is some sub theme of proliferate in here. That is for the main purpose of either trying to get Veraska's ability all the way up so that we can actually use her alt, but also if we can get a poison counter on our opponent, it is to get through a, a poison kill. Verdant Longbow gives the creature the ability to do damage to any target, notably a creature with infect will actually do that damage as minus one, minus one counters or poison counters, so it's very good. Wolf Hunter's Quiver for one mana says equipped creature has tap. This creature deals one damage to any target or cap, tap, it deals three damage to target werewolf creature. Uh, Demonic Vigor, Vigor for one black, enchant creature gets plus one, plus one, and then when die, we return it to its owner's hands. So this is just another protection card for our creatures. Kaya's Ghost form is the same, except we can also enchant our Planeswalker. When the enchant permanent dies or is put in exile, we return that card to the battlefield under our control. Our first land is Baron Moor. It's got one black cycling, and it taps for black. Dark Seal of Steel Citadel. Desert of the Glorified is also cycling, so this is just some additional card drop we really get uh, tied up. Burns Bastion is a land with proliferate on it. Looted Mire Cycles and Swamps. I believe that's the whole deck. Oh, running a Vault of Whispers. This is also partially in here as a target that we can sacrifice uh, to our one artifact i am thinking about adding treasures to the deck i want to get you guys' read in the comments below if you think that's a good idea and that's the Veraska scheming gorgon deck uh i'm still looking for more ways to proliferate this deck like i said currently the deck is about 22 dollars on tcg player if you've liked the video i appreciate you stopping by please remember to uh like uh share comment do you know the youtube things it helps grow the channel and it helps get more people into the Oathbreaker format. Let's blow up this format together. Uh, my subscribers are uh, scrolling on by below. If you subscribe to the channel, I'll try to get your name added to this list as fast as possible. Patrons are over here. And then I guess I'll put a video up right here that'll probably be another deck tech video that I think you'll enjoy. If you've got any questions, comments, or concerns, you can hit me up on Twitter, or you can join the Discord. And if you join the Discord, there is an opportunity for you to actually play Loth Oathbreaker live on stream with me, and I'd love to see you and get to know you. Other than that, thank you for dropping in, and I hope you have a great day.